Mm -hmm. I don't know what I'm saying. But they can't be So the police I already best. So Marla, what is Davey going to do when he graduates? Well, we're hoping he goes to BYU, but we don't know yet. Yeah, because that's like in the end of February, right? February 20th, I think. And he just finished his application okay, to BYU Hawaii. Okay, has been on for a long time. Oh, he wants to go. Almost an hour. Oh, because he likes the water. You're okay? You'll warm up. And tights. And Lynn, I don't know what I'm doing. Okay. okay, so to take out a seam, you have to rip. I took so many lessons in high school, it doesn't stick. In yeah, my head. no, sorry. No, no. If you haven't done it recently, it's not going to work. It's just 15 now, 15. Oh, so following directions, I could never do. Oh, okay, that's not a problem with me. That's different. So I just put it in there. It's really a matter of five. It's not a matter of skill. Go along there and get all the little things. Okay, skip to it down. Oh, there's a hole in it. Yeah. Okay. 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 You got all of our emails about Laura and our member. Right? Okay, that's I get it. I get it totally. And you don't have to. Some people can try to work with you separately. Just if she wants a photo or she wants to, we're doing that this week. John three. No. Number three. Number three. Uh, that's the uh, day the earth was created and given light. So if you, but if you read in Genesis or Moses, that's not true. One place. Okay, I have to tell you one other thing. So it Saturday, uh, Tuesday nights I teach at Stanford. I'm sorry. Uh, Tuesday night I teach all the Stanford kids. Oh yeah. And um, I had three PhDs from MIT um, in the room, and I said, "Any mathematicians in here?" And about twenty five people raised their hand. You know, yeah. it's they're all they're all a bunch of geeks. Right. And I said. I'm going to talk about the biblical perfect number of seven, but what is a perfect number? <laughs> no one knew it. And I said, I just got to tell you, it's number six. So it immediately Googles it and they said, oh yeah, look at this. It's the sum of the parts. <laughs> and did you know the next one is 28 and the next one is, anyway, I just said, yes, yes, yes. So I used your... <laughs> I, I'm working on the seventh, oh, that's good. and it's really big. <laughs> that is just amazing. Kim, hi, welcome. Nice to see everybody here. Actually, I can't see anybody. Where's my glasses? Right there. Right there. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. When I can't see my glasses, it's a really oh, bad oh, news. Oh, no, let's get you right. Okay, just, just write your email down and give it to me, and I'll add you when I get home. I would encourage everyone to keep their coats on today. <laughs> I am freezing. Of all days. Okay, get up by your mouth. Oh, right. okay. Did you know that? Oh, yeah. Yeah, I grew this for their one. No. 
Okay, have that make sure it's working. Yep, I think it's working. Okay, use your quieter voice. Oh, look at everybody's on top. This is so great. Welcome, welcome. This is just terrific. We just got to get on the right picture. No, it's not going to work. Uh, there we go. There we go. There we go. Sorry, I'm like right out here. Oh, and you are not even wearing a coat. I might need to share with you my coat. You are going to be sneezing. Should I get cold? I'm thinking on my husband's coat. <laughs> we'll start by singing Hymn 124. Which one did you want? No, 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 whatever you want. Okay, what, what is it? Okay, be still my soul. Whatever you want to sing. I, I always bow to the pianist. You know, <laughs> if you can play the piano, we'll sing. I care it. I can. Look at this. This is great. Well, you no, 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 no. We'll be just fine. We'll be just fine. Welcome, welcome. Hip under 124. Let's sing. I am so glad to see everyone here. And if we all sit really close together, maybe we'll stay warmer. <laughs> I think it's 32 degrees in this building. Here we go. <laughs> Just one note's fine, whatever. Yeah. There we go. <laughs> That is not one every, everyone has memorized, so we can't sing too many of that one. Oh, this is our iambic pentameter hymn. Good to know. Good to know. Thank you, Kim. Um, welcome. Glad you're here. I'm thrilled to have the chance to hear your thoughts and to dive into John chapter three with you. Let's begin with a prayer. Um, last week, we got through A's and B's. Anybody whose last name is A, B, C, or D? Or first name or middle name? Um, or your son's name or your daughter's name? Um, a, B, C, D, E, F. Great. Thank you. Thank you. Great. Maiden name. Oh, perfect. Oh, you went down in the alphabet. I went from an H to a W. <laughs> Gathering this morning and studying the gospel. So grateful, Father, for Sister Wilson and her dedication and, and study on our behalf. We pray that we all might learn from her disciples tonight. We're grateful for the beautiful sunshine and, and the uh, crisp winter weather uh, that makes us appreciate the warmth more. We ask for thy spirit to be with us this day. These things we ask and pray for. 
Father, in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Thank you for that good vote on being grateful for what we have and enjoying what we see. Um, I was just reminded that on the third day of creation, light is in one of the creation accounts. And I think that's very significant because that's such a big theme for John, this light and darkness. Do you remember at the beginning of John in that introduction, he talks about light a lot. And he continues that theme throughout his um, gospel. And today it is so important as we look at the story of Nicodemus to realize what time of day it is. When does Nicodemus come? And he is in the dark. And yet, ironically, I just feel like anytime we say, why is this happening to me? Nothing is more ironic than the Lord's, uh, than the situation of the Lord. And I think John is intentionally writing this gospel so that we'll see these crazy ironies. Um, Let's talk about who Nicodemus is. His name means one who will prevail over the people. I assume he was born into a socioeconomic and educational group that was a little bit higher because most people did not move. Hello. Most people did not move out of their socioeconomic classes like you can when you come to America and the first generation you sacrifice so the next generation can have a better education and the third generation can um, be a little more stable. So they didn't move that, that way in the um, younger years of the ancient world. They often stayed in their own socioeconomic classes. You just did the same work your dad did. And if your dad had the job of picking up dog excrement, then that was your job. I mean, it really, it really was unfortunate. And because he's wealthy, that's what I'm assuming. And welcome to the iceberg. I'm so glad you're wearing a hat and I'm glad you have a coat. Just keep it on, keep it on, keep it on. Um, so what do we know about Nicodemus, you guys? Anybody other than his name? Nicodemus, what do you know about him? He's a member of the Sanhedrin. The reason why I think that's so interesting is because you remember when Herod the Great came in to power, and Herod the Great is, um, um, no, that's when he started building the temple. He, he's, he's called to be the king in 40 BC, but the Jews won't let him reign until he kills all of them, all the people who are opposing him. So he comes into Jerusalem in 38 AD, BC. It's like, it's the um, 38 BC, and he reigns you know, until the Lord's birth when he dies shortly after the wise men come. Um, or so the Lord is two years old or whatever. But um, he he wants complete control, so he decimates the Sanhedrin. Sanhedrin is supposed to be the religious bodies. Every major family has a member in the Sanhedrin. It's supposed to be representative of the people. And he says, <laughs> He completely decimated these, and I don't want the Jews having control. I want to be the honcho. And so he decimates the Sanhedrin and only puts in a few puppet people. So do you remember when he um, doesn't know his scriptures well enough to know where the Messiah is supposed to be born? And he goes in Luke chapter, Matthew chapter two, he goes to the, um, it says the leaders. Well, he goes to the Sanhedrin and says, where is he supposed to be born? Where's the chief priests or whoever the leaders are at the temple? Of the and they say, oh, it's very, everybody knows, you know, he's going to be born in Bethlehem. Um, I think it's very significant that the Sanhedrin were now um, probably sometime close to um, 30 AD, and the Sanhedrin has been built up a little bit. But Herod's son is reigning, and it's not what I'd say back to um, diplomacy, you know, you still have a few people there, but they're willing to work with Herod. They're willing to work with the Romans. They're um, very wealthy and they've got a lot of um, education. So the fact that he is a member of the Sanhedrin means his family has been holding hands with Rome and the Herods. So I think there's something good about being able to be politically savvy to a degree, um, but he's supposed to be a leader of the Jews. And that's why the Lord's frustrated. But I just think um, the fact that he is willing, and I know he's coming at night and all that stuff, but he is willing to go and talk to the Lord says a lot about him. 
Because what about the other? It's supposed to be 70 members. It's supposed to be the 70 Sanhedrin. But what about the rest of them? You know, he's the only one that comes. So he comes from a family of wealth, probably education, whatever experience, blue blood. Um, but he's still humble enough to sneak away at night. <laughs> and he go and check this out. Um, but he doesn't find what he's looking for. Okay, what else do we know about him? So he's in the Sanhedrin. Nancy. Well, he obviously was royal, I think. Yeah. And he defended him. And then I believe he was at his burial. Isn't that interesting? He is at the burial. So he has this experience at the beginning of the Lord's ministry. And we don't hear about him at all during the ministry. And then he's at the cross, hitting the body with Joseph and Arimathea. And it says, um, we'll talk about it when we get to the end, but it says that he brings, Nicodemus is the one who brings, it says 100 pounds, but I didn't know in King James' time, a pound was 12 ounces. Huh. So it's 75 of our pounds of um, oils and things to anoint the body of the Lord with. 75 pounds. So he had, you know, his servants came with him and they, they, they did that. So I think that's beautiful. He's a member of the Sanhedrin. He is a disciple, a secret disciple, whatever. He's hidden, he's quiet, but all the way through to the death. And um, I just feel like sometimes we need a voice in places that matter for this very for this very reason. I just feel like, I'm sorry this conversation doesn't go well with the Lord. <laughs> yeah, I'm sorry that he's in the dark and he, leave, he comes in the dark and he leaves in the dark. I mean, he really doesn't get it initially, but he still has a softness heart that he thinks about it for three years and he's in a place where he can actually do something. Anybody else remember anything else? That was excellent. Sanhedrin at the cross in the burial friend of Joseph of Arimathea. And it says when he's talking to the Lord in, in this chapter, he says, we know and I assume that he is just a representative of the other Sanhedrin. He was the one either that got um, the eeny, meeny, miny, mo. You know, he was the one that got the bad joke. Or somehow he, um, he chose to be the one that came to talk to the Lord. But um, it also surprises me. This is a Passover. Everyone's down in Jerusalem. We've already talked about the city going from, you know, 20, 25,000 to... 10 times, maybe even 100 times that number. Josephus says it's 100 times that number. You know, 2,655,000 people is what Josephus says come for the Passover. Um, but at least 265,000. Just take up one zero if we need to. You know, I, 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 just an enormous amount of people. How did he know where to find the Lord? So, you know, without cell phones, we used to survive. I don't think we could do it anymore, but I just keep thinking, how did I find someone at the airport? You know, <laughs> they didn't have curb pickup. They didn't have, you know, it's just amazing. Um, this is sort of interesting. Um, let me just see if there's anything else. We're going to look at his discourse. Um, the Lord is first discourse. How many discourses does John have? Seven. Seven miracles and seven discourses. This is his first. This is the first one. And I think it's very significant that he comes in darkness in many ways. I mentioned before that John begins his gospel in the beginning, which is just like the book of Genesis. And then his first sermon starts out with darkness. And in the creation account, the reason why the Jews start their day at sunset is because it's darkness before light. And Joseph Smith's story, you know, he, he, when he was in the, in the, you know, praying, darkness came first. Oh, first, before the light. Yes, the adversary come. Yes, thank you, thank you, thank you. Yeah, and um, I really feel like this is an interesting thing to look at our own conversations with the Lord when we, when it's time for us to pray. Um, do we begin our prayers in the darkness? And do we receive his light or do we remain in the darkness? You know, because the Lord was trying to answer him and he didn't get it. How many times in my prayers do I not get what the Lord is trying to teach me? Um, there's that wonderful verse in Dr. Covenant section six that says, so Oliver Cowdery has just arrived. You know, it's before the organization of the church, before the Book of Mormon has been translated, before the before anything. And he says, how do I know if I'm supposed to be here? I, I need to have a revelation to know if I'm supposed to be here. 
And the Lord says to him in section six, which I just think is sort of a, a little mini handbook on, on personal revelation. He said, every time you've asked me a question, I have given you instruction. So I haven't necessarily answered your question, but I've given you inspiration. Every time we ask in prayer, we've been given inspiration. Now that, it was really surprising to me because I thought, I don't get answers every time I ask. And I thought, it doesn't say answers. It says instruction. And that's what's happening here. But I really do think the Lord is answering his question, but he is in the dark, so he doesn't see it. He can't put it together. You know, it's a, it's a Tetris or whatever. It's a hard, it's a hard thing to do. Um, I thought it was interesting that he is a member of the Pharisees. Now, Josephus says that we've got 6,000 Pharisees living at the time of the Lord, out of the New Testament. And that means 6,000 families. And that means they're the ones who are saying the speed limit is 55 in San Francisco on the Highway 80 as you come in. You know, I mean, I, they're the ones who say that. So they are the lawmakers that, and they're, they were the ones that won. This becomes the rabbinic tradition. Is the Pharisaic thought becomes the rabbinic tradition. So we know a lot about these Pharisees. 6,000 seems so small to me, but then I keep thinking, okay, so Nazareth has 400 people. Bethlehem has 200 people. Capernaum, the big, huge city of Capernaum has 1,000 people. And it's 6,000 families. So really, it's it's not, it's probably more than I'm giving it credit to. And I still think because they were the lawmakers, a lot of people tried to be a Pharisee, but you weren't a Pharisee unless you could live all these 10,000 oral laws. So a Pharisee has not only the commandments that are in the Old Testament, in the, in the book of Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, and Numbers in the Torah. Um, and by the way, this number 613 commandments was written after the time of the New Testament. So the Lord, this wasn't something that was floating around at the time of the New Testament, but it began being floated around a, a couple hundred years after the New Testament. Um, and then if you're going to be a Pharisee, you have to live the 10,000 oral laws. And why do they call them the oral laws? Did anybody remember that one? Do you want me to review that again? Why do they call them the oral laws? Moses actually said all of these, but they just weren't written down for 1400 years. So there are the oral laws that have just been passed on orally, but we haven't made up anything new. This is all from Moses. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. For that's why he had to be on the on the mountain for so long. You know, it was a lot of laws that he's having to memorize. Yeah, 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 yeah. But what really happened is in 600 BC um 600 BC, when the Babylonian exile occurred, they took the 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 um, twelve the Ten Commandments and augmented them. So they took "Thou shalt keep the Sabbath day holy," and they turned it into the 39 different kinds of work that were allowed. So that's 600 BC. So they take one commandment, turn it into 39. They did this after the exile or before. <laughs> While they are in Babylon, they say, if we would have been more strict with our obedience to the law, we could have lived it. So they, they write them out. And then they come back and they get attacked by the Greeks. They get attacked by the Romans. They say, ah, we're not living the law. Let's add some more laws. And that's when, right before the Lord, you know, 150 years before the Lord's birth is when they start adding in these 10,000 oral laws. There are 1,000 laws on the Sabbath. Yeah. Is this what was referred to as building a hedge around the law? Actually, the Mishnah calls it building a fence yeah. around the Torah. Yeah, that's exactly what they're referring to. And that's what this is. It's because they wanted to make, make it protected. But unfortunately, um, they lost the, you know, they threw the baby out with the bathwater. You know, they lost what they were supposed to be doing by this. And they became, because what happened is, and I got this not from a, a, um, from a wonderful a Methodist scholar at Cambridge. And she said, what happened is they lost the focus on the sacrifice leading toward their Messiah at the temple and started focusing on the law will save us. We don't need the Messiah. We don't need the sacrifice of the temple because the temple people are all corrupt anyway. So we don't need them because the temple people right now are a people who are working for Herod. They're the people who are working for um, 
the Romans, you know, they're the people who are putting in position because they're now puppets. Um, the leadership are puppets. And so we don't trust them. That's why the Essenes left. But these Pharisees that Nicodemus is one of them has this very strong background of if we can live the law, we will be saved. And that's why they felt so strongly about the law because they, they, they got it mixed up starting from before the Babylonian exile that it's the law that's going to save them, not the temple sacrifices. But we see this with the Benedites from the Book of Mormon, right? Yeah. He is over and over saying, because they're like, we're living the law, we're living the law. You've missed it, that law will not save you. So that, I mean, that's carrying on to the books, that idea that the law and, and look And look what time they yeah. left. So they're just in the same period. That's excellent. Um, Kim and Nancy? I was just going to ask. What would they mean by the words, by the concept of being saved? In that yeah, and I, that's obviously a, a word that I'm using, but they did not. So the, the Pharisees believe in a resurrection. Exactly. And if we want to return with God, that is the word I should have used. That's a very Christian word to say saved. Sorry, I should have said, but they did believe in being redeemed. So redemption is a, is a very strong principle in the Old Testament. So thank you for catching that one. Great. I wanted to bring up believe in the resurrection. Yeah, they did. The, the Pharisees do believe in the resurrection. Definitely, definitely. Yeah, yeah. They and Paul was very clever to yeah. take advantage of that. Yeah. You know, it sounds like how could Nicodemus not possibly understand what the Lord is saying to him? And yet they live a temporal life, they live a natural life, they have the lower life. This was not an integral vocabulary. Although it was interesting to me to look at the Old Testament, and I want to be able to do that today. Okay, you are probably absolutely right. Very I don't think your mic's working. Oh, I Okay, I think the batteries are out. So some of these are new concepts. Oh, so Effectively, we're being something we heard about. We're talking about things. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that has been really fun for me this year to look at what Christ restores in light of the Old Testament. And you can find the things he says in Isaiah and Jeremiah and Ezekiel, but they weren't incorporated in this portion. And that's the problem. Okay, let's open up the text. Any other background on sweet Nicodemus? Anybody else have anything you'd like to share about this great ruler of the Jews who is interested? Anybody who wants to know more about Jesus is a good person. I think Nicodemus should be one of our heroes. You know, we don't have a lot of children named Nicodemus. Have you ever named a dog or cat Nicodemus? I mean, you know, some people sick and other names do not. So why? We don't have hair in Zebra, I guess, you know. <laughs> okay, let's open up the text. Yes, please. You said it, Pharisees were separatists. Oh, I'm so glad you caught that. Thank you. I forgot about that. So, do you remember the pilgrims? Before we have, you know, in 1620, the Mayflower are called the separatists which I thought was very interesting that the Pharisees wanted to separate themselves and called themselves the separatists. They said, we are not the corrupt group. We are a pure group. And what happens when you start thinking you're a pure group, sometimes you think you're holier than thou. You know, that's, that's not what the Lord wanted, but that's unfortunately what happened. Okay, let's start with um, chapter three, verse one. Go ahead and we'll start on the... Um, Who's got it open? Who's got it? We'll just start there. Great, right here. We'll start on the right-hand side. We'll just wind our way back. Verse 1, 2, and 3. There was a man of the Pharisees named Nicodemus, the ruler of the Jews. The same came to Jesus by night and said unto him, Rabbi, we know that thou art a teacher come from God. For no man can do these miracles that thou doest except God be with him. So the fact that he's calling him Rabbi is a very respectful term, you know. Oh, I'm so honored to be in your home. Thank you for letting me come. I, I, I am eager to hear what you're here to teach me. I, I just like, you don't call somebody a rabbi unless you're going to, I mean, it means master. So that's really significant. Um, have you talked about this word miracle at all? No, not yet. So 
it's translated in the King James as miracle. It's a different word from what is used in Matthew. And it really means sign. It's a like sign. A miraculous sign. But the important idea is that it's, it's not just an amazing thing. It's something that teaches you who Jesus is. It's something that points, indicates something about Jesus. So we talked the very first week about John's gospel being a spiritual gospel. And in his seven sermons and his seven miracles, each one of them gives a sign of the spiritual nature of the Messiah coming in the person of our Savior Jesus. So um, I'm glad you pointed that out. It's a different word in John's gospel than it is in the others. And it, it, this is it very does that mean yeah. teaching us about it, Yeah, yeah. It's all to, to lead us to Christ. Yeah. Yeah. It's not just um <laughs> Yeah, amazing, amazing, wonderful things. There, no, there's a there's a purpose behind them that is far more important. It's it's far more important that you know that he is the Messiah than that you then you got your eyes your eyes back. Yeah. Okay. I know we're not on chapter nine yet, but I just got to tell you this happy happy news. Last night, my I'm on three different studies right now at the Stanford Eye Clinic, and um, last night I'm taking these crazy amounts of vitamin B3, niacin, and I'm fasting for 18 hours a day and all this stuff for all these studies. So no one has ever regained any sight from the optic nerve deteriorating like I have until this study has started. And we've been on the study now for six months and three of the patients have regained some vision. And in my right eye, I went from being half blind to a quarter blind in six months. And when I first started going blind, my the words Adam, the priesthood holder's mouth were, rejoice, you will see the hand of the Lord in your life. So I am so happy to be on 3,000 milligrams of niacin. <laughs> Yeah. My poor, my yes. Oh, well, that's why she's got my coke out. My poor I was taking the brunch of it, but I said, you know, I'd rather have a liver and keep my eyes. You know, keeping my eyes. Don't I? <laughs> um, now I pointed this out at the bottom of the handout here that Andrew, John, Nathaniel, and Nicodemus are the only ones we know of so far that are following the Lord in John's account. Now, we've had the miracle of the wedding of Canaan, so there's got to be other people who know about it. And Nicodemus does say, we've been hearing all about these things you've been doing, and they are pointing to you as the Messiah. But the only names we know are just four disciples so far. Um, isn't, isn't Philip in there, too? Oh, did I, did I forget Philip? Of course he is. It's five. It's five. It's five. It should be Philip there, too. Yeah. Yeah. You're right. Um, I will okay. Verse three. Let's keep going. Jesus answered and said unto him, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Okay, so I thought that this was a pretty new idea, but it is in the Old Testament as well. This idea. And I just feel like you live in a culture where there's no hospitals. Birth is part of your life. You see it in your animals, you see it in your home. This is part of the home environment. And so it's interesting that he can't bridge this, especially since all the young men are married. I mean, it's, it would be one thing if he's just a 30 year old in, in Silicon Valley. Of course, he, he's never seen a birth, you know. <laughs> no, 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 no. You live in a one room house, you know, 92% of the population lived in um, off the land, you know, in, as peasants. So they know how their animals are giving birth and how their wives are their daughters and their grandmothers gave birth. You know, they're in the house. They may not be in the room during the labor and delivery if you're male, but, you know. Um, it's really pretty interesting, though, that he cannot make this jump. And I I wondered if, if you so strict. To me, it's like a, an Olympic athlete, athlete. You know, you have worked so hard on this. Or my kids on the piano bench, I remember telling them, if you're going to spend six hours a day on this panel bench, I don't want any antisocial behavior because you're not getting around people enough. You know, I, I just feel like, you know, you become so focused on something, you lose sight of everything else. So is that why he loses sight that he can't even figure out that there's symbolism between birth? Anyway, I, I'm just trying to say it's part of what he's been studying all these times. If it's not physical, he doesn't get it. Anyway, I'm, I'm just fascinated because the Jews are supposed to think symbolically. I mean, that's part of their Old Testament, you know. 
maybe he was answering symbolically, saying, 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 teach me more about this. How can that fit? He, he was not totally. Yeah, yeah. And that's why he stayed and kept asking rather than left is because he was maybe answering that way. But it is interesting that when he asks here, the Lord answers here. You know, or the Lord answers over here. <laughs> Maybe that's it. But he, you know, he's trying. He's giving him instruction, but it's not clear. Okay. Sometimes don't we feel like that when we're talking with our spouses. <laughs> well, and that is the beauty of it because I feel like we can understand our prayers, our relationship with our heavenly Father better if we look at this story. I just feel like no, this is. Just go where he's going. He's giving you instruction. Go there and think about it, Anne. <laughs> For those of you, we just had state conference and President Baines was speaking at the church or at the pulpit. And he said, as a professor at Stanford, he said, I can always tell who the B students. He said, the B students are the ones that are super energetic to raise their hands, to answer their questions, to give commentary, to like hear the words of their own voice. And he said, the A students are the ones who sit and listen and then ask me questions. And so I'm thinking about this, and I'm like, well, maybe maybe Demis is an A student. Is that what you think? I don't know. Yeah, I don't know if he was just trying to ask questions, or if he just didn't get it, or wasn't willing to get it. Well, I love that he is confused, but the fact that he stayed meant that he wanted to learn. I mean, he's calling him his master teacher. He calls him Rabbi. I really feel like he's trying to learn. Yeah. And some of us are just a little thicker, you know. Um, okay, verse. Oh, go please, go ahead. Yes. I feel personally like this. Lots of times I read Jesus' actual words, and I feel like Nicodemus. Maybe he. So he answered, asked literally, but he could just be saying, "Uh, could you explain that?" I mm don't -hmm. Yeah, 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 yeah. On the other hand, if we ask with a sincere heart, we're supposed to get the spirit. So. Yes. <laughs> yes, I think he was sincere because he stood around, he stayed around. You know, I really feel like he is one of our earliest disciples, probably the fifth named male disciple that we know. Yeah. Um, sometimes, uh, sometimes, uh, um, I want to be told exactly how it needs to be done, especially with computers. You need, you need to be. Born of the Spirit. What is what does that mean? Yes. No, you need to be put into water by the proper authority. I mean, have yeah. it written, written out. out. And he and I believe he, he if he wanted to run, he wanted to know every step. Yeah, yeah. And I think I think that is hitting the nail on the head because this was every step. You count your steps. You count. Well, that's what he's used to. That's exactly what I was trying to say before. He's he's used to this, and that's where he's coming from here. This is how he got his education before, by but counting every step and looking at every step. And now he goes to the Lord, and the Lord says, think out of the box. Yeah. He says, I don't know how to do that. Yeah, yeah. But he stays there. Yeah, excellent. Kathy. Instead of saying, holy, all of us have really set ideas of what that means. And the, the uh, general authorities are telling us, principle and then you have to be, be decided so i think some people kind of take advantage of that <laughs> but um but we we do like to know exactly what is good what is bad what's going to save us what's not it's, it's mm -hmm. something i think every human being wants to know mm -hmm. fact. Mm -hmm. yes yes and and i think it's much harder to um do it the way the lord's asking us to do it which is stretch and stretch because it's really a tighter law when you have to follow the Lord rather than looser, but you have to do it the Lord's way. Yeah, please, Laura. Oh, fabulous. Higher law, lower law. Yeah. And it doesn't mean we're more lax. It means we're more responsible. And it does stretch us. Yes. Yeah. I love that. Yeah. 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 Well, that's why we tell children, hold my hand while we cross the street. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's easier. It's like Sarah, the question, like, what will save us is the wrong question, because Jesus saved us, right? Ah. That, that, that is, that's the wrong us. question. So if we get closer to him, if we learn what he's like and become like him, and we, and we value what he wants for us, then we will be aligned with him, and that will save us. 
like doing those things, which will look different for each individual. Oh, Sarah, that is powerful. Say it again. I want to make sure everybody hears online. <laughs> Say it again really loud so they can be online. That's really good. Jesus saves us. Yeah. <laughs> no law is going to save us. Yeah. We need to align our will with this. We need to become like him and learn who he is and, and, um, and what he wants for us individually. Mm -hmm. And that's the higher law that he's asking us to live is just do it my way. Just follow me. Yeah. Yeah. That's great. Okay. Verse four. Uh, Are we on three? No, four. Okay. Good. 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 Nicodemus says unto him, How can a man be born when he is old? Can he enter the second time into his mother's womb and be born? Yeah. It's a great image, isn't it? Yeah, I mean, he really is a literalist. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's really looking at it that way. Um, and yet, um, as I look at just some Old Testament stories, these images are all over the place um, of birth and rebirth and new birth but they were missing a very important scripture that was lost, that is referred to as Moses 1, um, in Moses 1 now, where they, um, I guess it was published first in 1834 or something like that. So it's, it's, you know, it's earlier than the Nag Hammadi scrolls and the Dead Sea Scrolls, but still, and that's where it says, um, that Adam taught you have to be born of the water and of the spirit in order to enter into the kingdom of God. And it talks about this idea of, it's also interesting that John the Baptist is so important in John's gospel because John says, I came to baptize with water and the Lord is coming to baptize with the spirit. You know, he wants us to make that leap into listening to our inner um, voice, our, the Lord's voice inside us. Yeah. Okay, keep going. And Jesus answered, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, except a man be born of water and of the spirit, he cannot enter into the kingdom of God. Great. Keep going. That which is born of the flesh is flesh, and that which is born of the spirit. Marvel not that I said unto thee, you must be born again. Okay, so in your own life, grab the person next to you or turn around, make sure all two or three are in or together, make sure no one's apart. And, and just talk about those, that whole idea, that which is born of the spirit is from the spirit and that which is born of the flesh is of the flesh. What is, it's not easy to understand. I, I, I really appreciate the deepest, you know, it's not easy to understand. What does that mean? That which is born of the spirit is born of the spirit. Okay, take, take a minute or two and talk about that one amongst yourselves. <laughs> It's funny because I feel like we did all of this. Yeah. We didn't do that. We didn't do John 3, but we did John 3. Yeah, like, what is your response? It's like, when we run out of money, I don't know. I don't know. Okay, 10 more seconds. That's true. Right now, I hope this stimulates a lot of thought to percolate throughout the week because I'm just fascinated um, with how we do that. How are we more focused on things of God rather than things of man? You know, it, it, it really helps us to always remember him. I think if we can always remember the Lord, we're looking for these things. But it's this is a good thing to to think about. Um, I also feel like um, the sweetness of the comments of Nicodemus is really trying is very clear when he says it's obvious that you come from God, but the Lord answering saying you can't enter the kingdom of God unless 
you understand what being born again does. And in King James, it's born again, but in the Greek, it's also a man must be born from on high or a man must be born from heaven. So I think that would have been easier for Nicodemus than born again. You know, a man must be born from on high. You've got to have a life that's focused on heavenly things. Anyway, I thought that was um, a little bit helpful, but I also wanted to just compare and contrast. So the idea of being born of the water and born of the spirit is not only mentioned in the New Testament, but that phrase is repeated um, in the restoration. And I want you to look at these two and tell me what is the difference between section five and John chapter um, three, verse five. Behold, whosoever believeth on my words, him will I visit with manifestations of my spirit and they shall be born of me, even in water and the spirit. I think if Nicodemus had that message, and by the way, section five is right after the loss of the 116 pages. He's getting a very hard spank and Martin Harris is chewed out. And the Lord says, you are not going to get it unless you're born again. You're in the dark because you, you're more worried about men than you are about God. You're, you're, you're more worried about your public opinion than you are about your opinion with God. You know, So he's chewing them out. But what is the difference between except a man be born in the water of the spirit and looking wrong? What are we what are we taught differently between these two statements? This is really significant. I think. Yeah, the belief on my words. You've got to believe. And then how are you born from on high? After you believe, what's what are you given? I just think it's revolutionary. And it happens all the time. Every time I find a phrase from the New Testament that's found in modern revelation, they add the influence of the spirit. It's like 98% of the time that they talk about a phrase from the Old Testament, a phrase from the script, the Bible, it is augmented with the spirit. I just, this is really something that was important. Now, um, one, two, and then three, go ahead. Well, uh, like in Job Smith's case of giving the, the a pleading for Martin Harris, you could see that Martin Harris was in a tight bond. He would, it, it wasn't, I don't think, to get the approval of men so much as this is really basically a good guy who's trying to keep peace at home. Um, that doesn't seem any well, he, well, I'm just saying. On yeah, no, I was going to say, no, he, 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 he disobeyed. Like, he <laughs> did disobey, but what I'm saying is that when we're led by our natural goodness, sometimes we don't see the importance of just trying harder to live with the Lord. It's exactly the problem that with Nicodemus and with Martin Harris is they were not willing to say, I'll do it your way, God. Right. Yeah. It, 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 yeah. There, yeah. I, I'm a good guy. But unless you're going to do it God's way, you're going to yeah. be, you're going right. to miss, you're going to miss the boat. You're not going to get on the boat. Okay. Uh, Rich and then um, Marla, if that was the next one. Oh, oh, no, no, Laura and then Marla. Okay. Rich. I perceived a explicit witness of the spirit but it was through no real fault of my own it was almost two years later before i was able to be physically baptized what was my what was my situation in that two years period? you look at john three it almost suggests that well no nothing happens until you're physically baptized but dnc5 could suggest that well, okay, I've uh, I've received the Spirit to some extent in some ways. Yes, way. I love that, and I do believe Nicodemus did feel a witness of the veracity of the Savior's work, and that's why he was there. So I do think because he wanted to believe, he opened the doorway to receive higher revelation. Yeah, thank you, thank you. Okay, Laura, then Mark. Again, going back to the thing that you um, said that our soul. Is made up of our body and our spirit. And to, I think when we are baptized and we do all of these things with our bodies and we're spending our life trying to unite those two so we can truly commune with God, like it says our soul communes with God. So I think we're, we're striving to create this, this what's the word? Yeah, I guess unification. Mm -hmm. Between um, our heart and our mind and our spirit and our, our body. body. Yeah. And, and sometimes that takes lifelong effort. And having that baptism, being born again, you realize the strength of our spirit and how necessary that is 
in conjunction with our bodies um, to really be human with God. That's beautiful. And as you were speaking, um, I thought, but we're born again, but sometimes we don't stay alive spiritually. Mm -hmm. So we can feel the spirit two years before and we can, but there's undulations. And that's why I think we have to constantly be striving to maintain that feeling of a closeness and feeling the Lord's love in our life because it, it is, we, we are born and we die. <laughs> you know, yeah. The sun rises and we have the same problem. <laughs> Sure, there's a wash, right? Yeah. You, know, you know, there's always two good things, but what's, what's, yeah, yeah, yeah. Very good, very good. Okay, Marla. Well, help me understand, Lynn, because I, I love it when I see like the Lord building on things in yes, scriptures line yes. online. And John, right out of the gate, feels like he's talking about water and the spirit right out of the gate. In, in Old Testament, was this not an understanding that they had of the spirit of God? Because Dr. Incumbent, right in the restoration, he's saying manifestation of my spirit. Yeah. Like this spirit idea okay. seems to almost be new. No, Genesis starts out with but the creation. And the creation, the spirit is brooding on the waters. And then the spirit, and then the spirit, and then the spirit, um, you know, is able to create life. And it is the spirit of God that does all sorts of things. But was that something that was lost? In the 10,000 oral laws and the adherence yeah. to law, did yeah. they lose this idea yeah. of a manifestation of the spirit, of being born of the spirit in their mess of trying to obey strictly these laws? That's and so the Lord is point. trying to build this yeah. spirit idea He's trying back. to restore this again. And you know, yeah. the early Christians called the New Testament um, um, the dispensation of the spirit. The apostolic church in that time period is the dispensation of the spirit because they felt like it was restored by the savior. Because yeah. it does seem, I, I, that's why I asked you, because you know better than me. No, I didn't it know does it. seem like it was lost. Yeah, yeah, I, yeah. I, well, especially since um, you don't have the Melchizedek priesthood, which is that which gives the gift yes. of the Holy Ghost. And, and but that doesn't mean everyone who's born though, we believe as Christians, God has given us, if you have your right faculties, the ability to know you have a conscience, you have the light of Christ, you have the spirit of God to help you make decisions until we wear it down so many times that it's it's dull. Then I remember some time back you described a um, a scenario where you were talking with a with a Orthodox rabbi about something, and you you suggested that understanding of a particular principle. Uh, could come from the spirit and he said absolutely not it, it could only come by literal uh study a literal study words. yeah that's exactly right and, and it happened just yeah. last year yeah in that, yeah that's a very very common very central uh canon of rabbinic judaism, judaism. which is a successor of the Which is exactly like, the Pharisees, exactly right. Yeah, yeah, excellent. Right. So when he says here uh, in chapter verse five of the water and of the spirit, spirit capitalized, is he introducing a new concept to Nicodemus? Well, I think it was, and that's why Christ is so frustrated with him. It's in the scriptures. How come you don't know this? But I don't think it was prioritized. You know, I feel like. Um, the same way in our lives. We don't prioritize every little thing that our parents did. You know, we prioritize our cell phone now rather than, you know, walking across the street and saying hi to the neighbors every day. If you, if you look at the um, practical guide on uh, being spiritually reborn. Thank you. If you look at the number of scriptures yes. in the Old Testament, there are very few. There's one in, in Samuel, Samuel, one in Ezekiel. Perfect. And there's only a couple there that Perfect. talk about being a new heart or a new spirit. Yes. But in the Book of Mormon, it's just saturated. It's just everywhere. Yeah. And in the New Testament, it's much more than yes. Yes. And this, I believe, is I'm so glad you brought this up, Bill, because this is why Christ has to restore it, is because it had been lost. It was there, but they were no longer emphasizing it. This is why you need a living prophet is to know what to be emphasized now. And Jesus Christ is that voice here in Jerusalem. Yeah. Jesus sent the Holy Spirit after he died. Okay, so the Spirit it was, according to this book of Moses, the Spirit was given to Adam and was there all the way through. And then we also learn that 
every person born in the world has the light of Christ. But during Christ's lifetime, according to the Gospel of John, the way it's written right now says um, when Christ was on the earth, he didn't want a double witness to offend people, or whatever. So the Spirit came at his death, and that's the Last Supper, exactly. You know, let's let's bring the Spirit. Now that I'm going, I'm going to give you somebody to take my place, and that'll be a witness of the Spirit. Yeah, yeah. So it was there supposedly, and then it's there. Obviously, Elizabeth says. I had a witness that you are carrying the Messiah, you know, so the, we see evidence that the spirit is working. The fact that Nick, Nicodemus knows he wants to learn something. I can see evidence that people have the light of Christ and are acting on it, but the gift of the Holy Ghost does not come until after. Yeah. But I still think the spirit has so many, a spectrum, you know, to know right from wrong and to believe it and then to believe Christ, you know, I, all that is way before the gift of the Holy Ghost. So I, I feel like, yeah, they had part of it, but maybe not all of it. One, two. Kathy. In my experience with a couple of times with, with other Christians, they don't know about the spirit either. They they don't. The, at least the six that I that I have spoken with say, well, what what is this, you know, being told by the spirit? And they 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 even it's difficult, people, yeah. It's not, you know, they yeah. They well, as Scrooge says, it's a bit of undigested potato. <laughs> you know, I mean, you know, <laughs> so many things can affect your emotions, you know. And then also Nicodemus is coming and he's just had physical evidence. He hasn't had a spiritual witness. Because of all these great things you've done. I've seen your be, signs. I uh, want to know. Just don't convert. Ah, um, excellent point, Kathy. Great. Keep going. Did you have a comment too? It was just, I think whenever I look at this, I was thinking of just the conversion process. Maybe this is going on a different, uh, like a, a different direction, but it just makes me think about how I, I feel like he's telling him he's like he's got to start over you know like you can't just rely on the things of the flesh all these oral laws the Torah all this stuff that is you've got to start flesh. over you've, you've got to start. completely start over and he's overwhelmed by that and it's very hard because he says no nope, none of that counted sorry you have to go back to the beginning exactly right yeah. that, that's what I think you know why he's pushing back on. Oh. Like, that's hard you know? oh yeah yeah that's that's how I read this is like he's he, the senior saying this is all come from the flesh. What you need to do is you need to focus on the spirit. Yeah. Everything you've done your whole life, you're 70 years old, you think, you know, it's all going the wrong direction. You need to start again. Oh, no wonder he was so discouraged. <laughs> <laughs> that is a beautiful image. I'm so glad. You guys, I just love hearing your comments. It's great to have you here. It's for the fact that I cannot get my machine to move ahead without me. Um, this is that verse that I mentioned before. <clears throat> As you were born into the world by water and blood and the spirit, which I made. So this is according to this ancient text. It's Adam who's saying this. Even so, ye must be born again into the kingdom of heaven, of water and of the spirit, to be cleansed by blood, even the blood of mine only begotten, that ye might be sanctified from all sin and enjoy the words of eternal life in this world and eternal life in the world to come, even immortal glory. And by the water, you keep the commandments. And by the spirit, you're justified. And by the blood, you're sanctified. So just this idea that this has been here and then we need prophets to restore it. And we need prophets to restore it because it's constantly being attacked by the adversary. Um, okay, we already did that one. So this is also tearing down something else. In addition to tearing down the false laws, it's also tearing down, you are wonderful, Nicodemus, because you have blue blood, because you are a direct descendant of Abraham, and so you're going to go directly to heaven. And he's saying, I don't care if you're blue blooded, you got to be born again. Your physical birth doesn't take you to heaven. So his whole culture is again just being, you know, dumped upside down, you know, though. There's salt all over the floor. You know, you know, it's just a disaster right now. So this idea that the chosen people are not just the descendants of Abraham's son Isaac and Isaac's son Jacob and Jacob's 12. And actually, we'll just stick with Judah um, if we really want to be blue, you know, or Levi, you know, if we really want to be blue. Um, that's all gone. I think if we're being fair, though, he does that to every single one of us. He dumps the, our culture on, on our head. I feel like in my life, he's done that many times where I have to rethink everything I knew, everything I wanted, everything I thought was logical, and he just makes, he just dumps it all over, and you have to trust in spite of all of it. 
well, you have to trust. And so that process, I feel like, is a very individual and universal process. Yeah, yeah. he's asking us to change always our view from the world to him. Yeah. And stop and yeah. just have faith. Yeah. I mean, sometimes we just have to have faith instead of trying to find all the answers. Yeah. yeah. What makes sense? Yeah. 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 Great, Nancy. Nancy. And then I was going to say that. So I like the scripture where it says you must agree. But in actuality, in order for us to change and to become more spiritual, we have to follow the way. We actually have to follow Christ. And that requires faith because faith then requires us to put it into action. So it means we actually have to change what we do, how we live. And so it's, it's, it's beyond an intellectual um, and academic discussion. It actually becomes more pragmatic in the sense that you really have to change what you do and how you do it. And that was more foreign because yeah. it was set in natural law. So faith has to enter in here to prompt us to, be, to change and have humility because the yeah. way obviously leads us to Christ yeah. and we have to accept him in order to have, to have him efficacious. It's him. so hard to do. Yeah. But you're exactly right, Nancy. I remember I got to a point on my toe that I I, I started at Berkeley. Um, there was a long half an hour and a half drive and everything. And I'm there with the professor there. I'm, I'm, 15, I'm 16. I just got my driver's license. And the teacher said, don't come back until you've mastered this. And I said, no, I need a lesson every week. And they said, no, I'm teaching you completely different than you've been taught. Don't come back until you've mastered this. And it just, it just killed me. I just went home and just sawed away for an hour. I was just furious at this new idea that everything I had done in my life wasn't the right direction. This teacher wanted me to take me someplace else. And I remember being so mad at that teacher and just, and of course it worked, you know? I mean, you don't become a special musician until you try a lot of different things. Yeah. This reminds me on my mission, I, I didn't baptize anybody under the age of 50. So, you know, like they, the, there were all these people that had lived their, you know, the whole their, lives. Their, their lives and then they completely changed everything that they knew. And I just remember um, one man at the very end of my mission who, who just, it, how naturally this process happens because he just came to me and just said, after he was baptized, he just said, the more I learn about this gospel, the more that the spirit is in my life, the more I feel like a child again. And, uh, um, you know, and nobody had taught me that. Nobody had said that. He, he was being honest. Yeah. The more I feel like a child. Yeah. Oh. Like, like that I feel like a, like I am a child again. Like that in such a good way. You know, yeah. like, like it was very positive. Well, really that good. we can change, that we can adapt. You know, you fall down, get up. You're okay. Hop up, brush off. You know, yeah, yeah. 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 And so it, it's just, it's a natural process that if you, you get converted by the spirit, then you know you you feel born again. You feel like you're starting a new life. Doesn't matter where you know all the, the flesh and all the whatever is there. You can start a new life, and the Lord can can restart and help you be. You know, start yeah, your life yeah, first. yeah. No, that's you guys. This is just powerful. I had not read it that way. Um, yeah, great. Go ahead. So this kind of reminds me of what we just talked about with uh, the new the strength of youth, youth pamphlet that Laura mentioned. Yeah, pamphlet, which is. Not word detail, for word. detail, detail, yeah. it's following the spirit. Yeah. And it's, it's a great step forward to try to tell a 12 year old to take responsibility too. I just feel like, um, yeah, it's coming really fast because I remember in the mission field when when they took you from mission rules to becoming a disciple of Christ, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and then later came. Yeah, that's no, it's it's it's, it's all good. good. Yeah, yeah, I totally agree. Who's the son of man? Right. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So it's not Adam like it was in the Old Testament, and then we'll end with this beautiful um, verses. Um, we can probably all say it in unison. And I'm sure everyone has it memorized. For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son, that whomsoever shall believe in Him should not perish but have everlasting life. For God sent not His Son into the world to condemn the world, but to save the world. And he is telling this to Nicodemus. This is the most important information in the world. And the poor guy is not used to having to think in that way. I really feel like the spirit is our mother tongue. But 
if we aren't practicing it, it's a foreign language. And this was a foreign language for him. You know, he just, and it is for all of us who don't try to say, I want to take responsibility for myself. I want to be um, flexible and changeable. Yeah. So uh, may God bless you this week as we um, continue to dive into your scriptures. I am so grateful for your thoughts and for it the spirit of the Lord that is in this room right now. And I would not be surprised at all if we had different kinds of glasses on, if we could see the promise that Christ gives us where two or three are gathered together, I am in your midst. And I believe that that is why this is a sacred hour for me in my week is because I believe that you come like Nicodemus, hungering and thirsting to learn more about God and because we're here discussing God's word, we can feel him in our presence. And I believe he is real. I believe he died for us. I believe he's our savior. And I believe that the only way we can really find lasting joy is by coming into him. And I leave this with you in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. I think we were using maiden names. So I'll go back to first, second, and third names. Um, anyone A through G who had like to pray today? G, um, A, B, C, D, F, G, H. H. Hilton. I, Sarah is. <laughs> what's your middle name? Sarah Ann? Oh, Elizabeth. Okay, that works too. <laughs> Our dear kind Heavenly Father, we're so grateful for this beautiful day. We thank you so much for Lynn. And we thank you for um for the work that she puts in so that we may come and, and learn and feel the spirit. We ask you to please bless us that we will continue to develop our spiritual sensitivity and that we will be able to bless our lives and the lives of those around us with it. And we say this in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. God bless you. Have a great day. Thank you. And we need to call somebody about getting the heater to work in this building for next week. All good. Did you need it? Were you, are you, are you, are your hands still freezing? <laughs> My hands are always. Oh, I'm yes. Still like purple. I don't think you're not five. I'm still getting the heater. Do not tell me. Well, there's one of the people. What else? You want to tonight? Yeah, yeah. Yes, I have to stop off and run around. So we're going to go across the end. Yeah, I guess she is. I just go in the drinks after this. So, anyway, yeah, so there's the news. Fix your mocha. You know, we're working through it and figuring it out. It's there for eight years. That's fine. Exactly. Yeah. The Lord helps us to receive. Yeah, absolutely. Bless you. Okay. Also, the people are. Yeah, I didn't. But anyway, it's good to see you. I talked to Marla. So. Oh, yeah, yeah. We're good. We're fine. We'll be okay financially. It's just, but it's so good to see you. Today, I knew that there was layoffs. You were part of the first person in life. As you, um, first, you have to get baptized so you learn something new. And then you have to get confirmed that it's right. And then you get immersed. Uh, and it, it was a, a thing that I listened to, and I wasn't quite understanding, but it's like when you have faith in something that you need to go and do it, and then you just go through all those steps in the fourth article of faith. And I, and I want you to look at it. So, and run on with and that, in that direction. Yeah. So it, with everything we do, you have to start with faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. And then the only way we'll understand it is if we go through repentance. We will not understand the spirit unless we have a repentance, right. point, which means we want to return to God. Oh, that is powerful. Yeah. I'm going to look at it again. So I yeah, think. in that perspective. I, I like yeah. that. That's really, that's really great. I'm so glad you're teaching John because there's so much missing in the other Gospels. Uh, this kind of information is just because of how it comes down at the end of Right, but I think, I think he had it. I think, I think he understood what Christ was much earlier than any of the other apostles. Well, and they that's don't speak in Matthew, Mark, and Luke. They don't even talk about.